Could everyone be seated, please? Councillor Nixon, where has he popped off to? There he is, popping back up. Cool. Tēnā koutou katoa, no mai haere mai, piki mai, kaki mai. Good afternoon, councillors, and a very, very warm welcome to our youth councillors who are with us today. It's an absolute thrill to have you in the chamber with us, and I look forward to officially welcoming you following our karakia by Reverend Jill MacDonald. Welcome, Jill. Tēnā koutou katoa. Kia inoi tato. let us pray. E te atua, te kaihanga, te kotahu, creator God and preserver of life. E te tama, te kaihoko, ti ariki, God the, God the Son and Redeemer. E te wairua tapu, te kai whakamārie, te kai rahi, God the Spirit, comforter and guide. We come before you in adoration, thankful for all that you give us. Grateful that we get to call Here Taonga home. These are such strange times that we find ourselves in as a community, as a nation, as the world. We are relieved that so far we as a nation have been able to keep COVID-19 at bay through the science-driven decisions our government has made. We are thankful that we have been able to protect our kaimatua and our whanau punamu our precious families. May they continue to experience the protection and aroha of your korowai tapu wrapped around them. We are mindful of the impact that lockdown has had on so many lives and that the ramifications of these are still unfolding. May all who are struggling know the sustaining power of your peace. As our Hastings District Council meets today, we are conscious of the many pressures they face as leaders of our city. Buildings closed because of earthquake risk, REC workers and backpackers stuck here, unable to leave, the economic impacts of COVID on our region, and so much more. It is tough being in leadership, something made clear by this morning's news. It is tough being the people who make decisions that affect people's lives, knowing that there will always be criticism and opposition whatever decision is made. Jesus said that for everyone to whom much has been given, much will be required, and from the one to whom much has been entrusted, even more will be demanded. Atua o te aroha, God of love, it is indeed such a responsibility to lead our Hastings community. So we hold out to you in prayer, Sandra, our Mayor, as well as each councillor on the council, Tanya, Baden, Alwyn, Malcolm, Damon, Eileen, Simon, Henare, Paletti, Anne, Wendy, Sophie, Geraldine and Kevin as well as Nigel and all of the HDC staff, the youth councillors and the media who are engaged in today's meeting. May they each be guided by your wisdom and compassion as they seek the common good for our city. May you bless them and keep them. E roto iti ingoa o ihu karaiti. Amen. Nā mahi nui, Jill, thank you for that beautiful karakia that is so relevant to today and um, the year that we are having and facing, and so thank you for your love and care of our community. Uh, Reverend Jill is a, as our Reverend for St Andrew's Church in Hastings, uh, of the very large Pacifica community that she blesses and looks after, and, um, and we're very truly grateful for you and the work that you and Chris are doing to bring power to our people and uh, care for our community. So thank you. It's lovely to see you today. Yes. Yes. <laughs> 
As I said over lunch to our Youth Council, um, it is fantastic to have you with us in the Chamber and this is uh, quite transformational that today we will recognise and acknowledge that how important our youth voice will be uh, to everything we do throughout our committees, our subcommittees. And so today we will um, we will receive your report but we recognise and acknowledge your amazing annual plan. And I think of the the Youth Council that we have this year, and each and every one of you are dynamic leaders, and you are Hastings' future leaders. And uh, it's, it's an absolute privilege to have you as part of um, what we do and what we do for our, for our community. Um, when I think of last year's um, Youth Council, and I know a number of you were with us last year, and I think of some of the vision and aspiration that, that the Council asked you last year, uh, and, and to see that you can be effective and you can make a difference. And I thought about your last year's Youth Council when I heard the recent announcement uh, of, from the Prime Minister that $25 million would be given for student mental health. And that was your chair of your Youth Council that presented that to the Prime Minister last year at Waipatu. So, you know, just everything you do, you can, be, you can make a difference. And so... Um, today we will we will address the uh, contribution that you will consider um, council will consider and the contribution that we know that you can make to our district. So kia ora koutou. Uh, no apologies received today um, and leave of absence. There's been no leave of absence notified. Do we have any leave of absence? No, everyone's working very hard. Um, conflicts of interest. We'll address those as we come to them, councillors. The seal register sitting there proudly on the table. Uh, minutes of the 25th of June meeting, moved by Councillor Watkins, seconded by Councillor Barber. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Thank you. That has carried. Um, just before we move on to the Chief Executive's report on page nine, can I just remind everybody that this meeting is, has been, is being live streamed today? And also, um, a number of councillors have just um, uh, asked me if I will acknowledge the fact that you're reading your agendas from your iPads. You're not um, doing your personal business. So just so our community understands the importance, you're not chopping down trees to create big agendas like the Mayor has, um, but you are in the Chief Executive, uh, but you are reading from your iPads. So I just want to acknowledge that to our community. And now we move to item six, which is the Chief Executive's report on page nine. Thank you, Chief. Maria, your worship, and um, councillors, and could also um, acknowledge our um, youth council and say um, how great it's uh, 
it is to have you here in the chamber with us this afternoon. I'll take my report as read, but um, it really sets the scene for today's um, meeting and kind of reflects the um, diversity of the topics that are on our agenda today, which is really underpinned um, by our community's wellbeing and how strategically important a number of the items are today, whether it's the you know, evolution of the Youth Council and their work and the move to give um, our youth perspective and our youth voice a place at the council um, table with the consideration of uh, the appointments to council subcommittees or uh, the very important matters of um, the regional council plan change proposal number nine which is really about um, how we think about water into the future and the submission that we make to that process uh, through to uh, speed limit reviews or in the context of our recovery plan post-COVID today the consideration of our arts recovery um, plan as part of that overall recovery plan. Um, we, we will start, and again, it's worth saying that um, you know, with, with lockdown, I'm very proud of the way that the staff um, recut a whole annual plan and a budget uh, that was the basis of um, council considering on the 25th of, of June submissions from our community, and today the process to give effect to striking a rate off that um, work. So a very diverse and wide-ranging um, agenda, but at the heart of it, um, I think largely the strategic matters that go to uh, our long-term uh, well-being in the Hiratonga district. So um, on that note, happy to take any questions, um, but just really setting the scene today for um, our agenda. So thank you very much. Kia ora. Um, any, any questions for the Chief Executive? Thank you. I'm happy to re re uh, move the report, seconded by Councillor Travis. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Any against? Thank you. That's carried. Moving on to item seven. Uh, welcome to Ashley, Financial Policy Advisor, and today is the resolution to set the rates for 2021. And as the Chief Executive has just said, can I also acknowledge the enormous amount of work that has been undertaken to, uh, through the COVID period to tr manage um, how we have got to this place, uh, how we have reflected and listened to our community. You want to welcome John? You need a seat. We move over for you, Megan. Well, lovely to have you in the chamber, John. <coughs> Great to have you back. Oh, no good. So, um, Ashley, welcome. And um, any over to you. Anything you'd like to add to the report? Setting the rates for the forthcoming year. Um, happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Councillor Barber. Kia ora tātou. Toto ngā mi ki te koutou ngā rangatahi. Ko hara mai nei te tikiro ki ngā neke neke hanga o te kauni hiro hiri tauna. Mihi ana ki a koutou. And uh, mihi ana ki tō tātou nei pāwhaka wairua, the first time I've actually heard my name in a prayer before, uh, here at the <laughs> Council Chamber, we all heard our name, so that was cool. But um, <clears throat> hey, uh, very happy um, uh, to support this, this paper. Um, uh, very happy because uh, we spent a few uh, long meetings um, in, in this chamber debating um, the annual plan and, uh, and, and a number of... Uh, uh, funding proposals that came to, to the council um, to either fund or, 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 or look at ways of funding, um, but ideally to, um, to manage our budget uh, because anything we, we, we choose to fund would have an effect on our, on our rates. And so um, that meeting we had not long after COVID to look at um, you know, uh, revisiting our annual plan and uh, the, <clears throat> I guess the, uh, the initial uh, rate um, level of 4.4% and uh, coming into a post-COVID um, environment, uh, how we could you know, really uh, limit uh, the mamai, uh, financial mamai I'm talking about on our ratepayers, 
um, and how we could bring that down. And um, and so, you know, firstly to acknowledge councillors and uh, Madam uh, Mayor, uh, your leadership in, in in doing that. And so um, we were able to do that um, to bring that down to 1.9. And I see that's still the case. Uh, we've had. Uh, We've had uh, follow-up meetings, and <clears throat> this time of the year, there's always stuff that comes uh, to the council. And it's all, um, you know, wonderful stuff that uh, that can uh, support our community. But in this particular year, a year like like no other, um, uh, we had to um, look at tightening our belt. And for for my from my experience on council, I, I don't think I've seen a rate increase this low um, in in the. Um, in the three, four, four and a half years that I've been on council, so um, I'm happy to um, to support this uh, this direction. And one of the other thing that things that pleases me is that we aren't um, significantly, significantly dropping our levels of service. We're still uh, pushing um, investment into our infrastructure. Um, and I guess the lesson for us is there are Pockets of funding out there, mainly from central government, but there are pockets of funding that we need to be tapping into. And I think, you know, I want to acknowledge uh, Nigel, you and uh, you and your team, uh, for, for really looking into every um, nook and cranny of the government putia uh, that, we can, that we can access. And I know, you know, it's not our time to, to make announcements, but those announcements will come and uh, we, will, we will hear... Uh, the significant contribution that the central that the central government will be funding and uh, supporting Hastings infrastructure and other projects here in our community to go forward. So, um, oh, you know, I'm very happy that we can keep the rate uh, burden at a minimum, um, but uh, still doing the mahi. And um, what, what was that, Tan? I think. Oh. We were right. asking, what, wondering what the question was, Councillor. Yeah, well, so, so the question, I'm, I'm getting to the question, Councillor, and it's going to take a little while, but um, I guess the question is, uh, in terms of um, uh, the 1.9% overall rate increase, um, I guess the question here would be to, to the Chief Executive. Um, in terms of the, the work that we had planned, in terms of infrastructure going forward, um, how have we uh, been able to keep that on track uh, without raising the, the uh, you know, actually ha having a decrease from 4.4 to 1.9%? I guess that's the question that I want to ask. Thank you, Councillor Barber. As um, councillors may recall, um, the, the importance that you put on um, with the context that you've just outlined around the importance of softening the rates impact for our community um, post-COVID, whilst also um, not, not cutting um, levels of service and continuing to largely deliver year three of the LTP was the brief that you set um, the officers in terms of bringing um, council back uh, an annual plan and budget. So we've been able to, um, through um, obviously some proposed, um, well, some asset sales that have taken place, um, to use some of those funds to offset some of the, the rates whilst also creating a contingency um, budget for council in terms of the things that are still in front of us or the things that are most important in, in terms of either our economic or our community <coughs> recovery uh, plan. Uh, being able to, through the clever use of financing tools, spread out a water rate over a slong, slightly longer period um, of time, as well as challenging uh, the officers to um, also look um, hard at how we take out and find efficiencies in terms of some of our operating costs. So... Um, you know, pretty clear through the annual plan and budget process that, that was adopted that we've um, you know, been tasked to take one and a half million dollars of operating costs out whilst maintaining our, our levels of service. And um, that means that uh, we, we are in a period of, of restraint um, where um, there, there, there isn't going to be um, uh, salary increases, where we're having to hold um, some vacancies. But that's um, in, the, in the knowledge of we're able to respond to do that because that's what's important for... Um, our community uh, in terms of the, the unprecedented period of time that, um, that we're in and a confidence that across that, using that range of um, both financing tools, um, some of the asset sales and um, the operational um, efficiencies that, um, that, that, that we'll be confident that we'll be able to deliver that. Kia ora. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, Councillor Dixon. Thank you, Worship. Like Councillor Barber, I'm also happy that we've come out at 1.9. Just a question for Ashley. Have you had an opportunity to sample any of the rates across a range of addresses so you know what the impact may be on some of the properties? <coughs> You will, ship. Yeah, we've, we've got um, a table that's put in the back of the um, annual plan that samples properties. Um, we've obviously, as part of this year, was our revaluation. So whilst um, you know, the average increase is 1.9%, uh, how that falls on individual properties will vary <coughs> according to what services they receive and their valuation. Um, but um, there are pockets of the community which will obviously see a larger increase than the proposed 1.9%. And there will be some that will receive... Um, a, a potentially a, a rate decrease as a result of the revaluation. Thank you. Happy to move the recommendations, Sir Worship. Thank you. To our seconder. Thank you, <laughs> Councillor Shollum. Um, any further questions or comments? I'll put those recommendations. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Any against? Thank you. That's carried. Moving on to item number eight. Um, welcome to Gavin and Lockie. Speed limit review and public consultation, page 23. Can I just make a note, please, for councillors? Because what, what, I, what I see is it has been omitted in this paper and also in the newspaper is that these, these recommendations today don't come from us. Don't, they, they are recommendations that come from the community over a period of time. And perhaps you could just expand on that, um, Lockie and um, Gavin, about where do these recommendations for speed limit changes and when do they, where do they come from and how often do they come? Because I think that's something that our community needs to fully understand. While it says Hastings District Council uh, makes recommendations, it's actually, it's our community and it's NZTA and, and the evidence from, from road users that uh, feeds into making these changes. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, yeah, I, I guess just to expand on that point, as we discussed uh, a couple of weeks back now around this table, the, the responses or proposals that are in front of you fundamentally <coughs> have come from a mix of community requests, uh, which we get weekly <laughs> and often. Uh, they come from a mix of community requests from our, our road safety drivers. So if we've got routes that are of specific concern or particular concern, we will look to review those routes and make sure the speeds are appropriate. And thirdly, they come from recommendations from the New Zealand Transport Agency, NZTA, in terms of where the highest risk roads are on the district's network. We take all of those requests and we uh, undertake some technical assessments and present back to you what we believe a, an appropriate response would be to each of those routes. As we discussed last time, there's a, there's a whole host of proposed changes uh, articulated within the report, but there was also a whole host of roads that we didn't recommend any changes. So it's not like we just go and propose changes uh, on all routes without going through a, a thorough assessment of those routes. So I, in terms of the report in front of you, it's, it's very similar to what was discussed two weeks ago around this room. There were some questions at that time which we have tried to address within the report and answer, and there may be more questions here today. There is one uh, addition to the report, which I don't think is included in the current report as councillors have it, but a, a request that come in late from the public associated to some of the proposed changes, which we're keen to just talk through, if that's okay, and uh, demonstrate, I guess, why the requests come from the public and what the response might be. So, thank you, Gavin. I've got a number of questions from councillors. Oh, so you you taking us through some... Uh, Okay. All right, we'll start with Councillor O'Keefe. Thank you. Kia ora, thank you, Your Worship. Kia ora, greetings to everybody. Yeah, future rate payers. <laughs> Lovely to see you. Um, <clears throat> I said to them, stand for council, but not in Flaxmith. <laughs> <laughs> Just one thing, we had a great community meeting. Uh, Councillor Ollie and I organised it. Wonderful support from staff, from the police. Uh, from Denise's team, I, I thought it was quite outstanding, one of the better ones we've had. And I do have a question. Uh, they were very sensible, uh, very uh, considered. But, uh, of course, when they put something on the table, they don't really know the ramifications or what it takes to get it there, the cost, you know, all that carry on. Like, 
Everyone wants speed bumps, but not outside their front door. <laughs> so all that sort of character. So my question is this, so that it's out in the public arena and not just left up to us. Oh, first of all, you say you get complaints weekly. Well, we get them daily, sometimes two, three times a day. So I just want to say that so that it's out in the public arena uh, in terms of the community meeting, Lockie, uh, where to from there? What's going to happen to all that information? I know, but if we can put it out in the public arena, it'll save us a lot of work. So where, where, what happens to the information? The feedback from these people here. Okay, so we've collated all the uh, feedback that the public gave us. Yeah. Um, we're in the process of the, the territory to Marta Road and Pilchers Road coming onto lawn. So consistency wise, I'm wondering whether we should have left that at 100 kilometres an hour until we got to the Lawn Road roundabout. So, sorry, I missed the last part. So, so, so leave it 100 kilometres an hour. To what extent, sorry? From, from Napier Road right through to the Lawn Road roundabout. So the, I guess the proposal that, or the recommendation from the officers is to, because we're, we're changing the speed limits on the Mill Road and the wider uh, Hamawana area, and Napier Road is 80 kilometres an hour to close the gap between the two, so to make that consistent at 80 kilometres. We did look at the specific risk along Lawn Road, uh, and essentially because of the traffic speed along there combined with the number of access points, it sits on the higher risk band, hence the recommendation to 80 kilometres an hour. Yeah, I guess I'm concerned about turning left into Martinunga Territory and straight into 100k, whereas you don't do that at Napier Road. I have had questions from the community about this. Um, and my other question is, um, I mean, you've probably got the answer there already, Lockie. This is um, a question from the community about Raymond Road <coughs> past the school, so Park Hill, Tuki Tuk, both going to 80k, and Raymond still sitting at 100. Okay, so that means it's on for our, yeah. our presentation now. So yeah. I think Thank I'll you. questions now come to us until we finish with the presentation. Perfect segue. So you recall uh, when we <coughs> gathered here a couple, of, a couple of weeks back, we, we talked about proposals on, uh, well, the waterfront in, in Hamawana and Tiawonga, but also changes to Mill Road, Lawn Road, and Tuki Tuki Road. Uh, additional commentaries come back from the community between then and now around some of the side roads that would be unduly impacted with these proposed changes, or more accurately, questions as to why we would leave some of those side roads at 100 kilometres an hour and not incorporate them within the 80 kilometres per hour reduction. So I'll, I'll go through those sort of one by one so it's clear. So previously we proposed to change the speed limit on Tuki Tuki Road and Park Hill Road to 80 kilometres an hour on both of those routes. So the question was, well, can we extend that 80 kilometres to incorporate Raymond Road so there's not a, a 100 kilometre per hour road in the middle of nowhere? There is an existing 50 kilometre school zone courtesy which we would look to retain. So it will be 80 kilometres for the remainder of that length. Similarly, the question on the side roads that come from Tuki Tuki Road, can we add them to the 80 kilometres an area so you don't go from 80 to 100 kilometres on what are, in most instances, relatively short lengths of no, in, no exit roads? Essentially, meaning that we get a, a broader area, 80 kilometre per hour treatment that incorporates all of those side roads. The way two, the community didn't ask for, uh, but if we were doing the remainder, we would look to add these in as well, two very short, short lengths of no exit roads. So the, the revised proposal, I guess, would be to incorporate all of those roads as an 80 kilometres an hour, with the exception of those that are currently 50 kilometres. Thank you. Good. Okay, so next councillor, Councillor uh, Shalom. Thank you. Um, thank you, Worship. Um, and thank you for the huge amount of work that's gone into this. Um, I respect the fact that when the community comes to us with uh, requests, uh, there's quite a validation process that's um, gone through. Um, so my question relates to 4.4. Uh, um, so this is regarding the proposed... <coughs> reduction in speed for the Havelock North CBD um, to 30k. Um, I note within the report that you've received feedback from the Hastings Business Association where they put out a survey and only had um, 32 responses, so I've requested a little more time to get more information and I guess more member feedback. Um, however, I see the proposal for the Havelock North 
um, areas to, to go ahead in terms of um, going out for consultation. Um, I'm just wondering, the response from the Havoc North Business Association, what was the volume of input that you received there? I guess in terms of volume, we don't know the answer. The, the response back from the Business Association was as a board, they've discussed with their members and they've agreed that 30 kilometre, or they support a 30 kilometre reduction in speed. Okay, so, so that was going beyond <coughs> just the board's opinion, it was talking to members? That's the feedback we've got. I okay. guess just to, to provide some confidence, regardless of that feedback, as part of the next process, we will go independently to all of the property owners affected. Um, I, th I think, uh, uh, Sharon, can I just add that um, at last year's annual plan, uh, we had the Grey Power, part of their submission was the um, suggestion and recommendation that Havelock Village became 30k, and that's where it started last year, last June. Um, so it, was, it specifically came from Grey Power and their members. Um, thank you for that context. I guess my query then is around... Um, Consulting with our community and avoiding any confusion, is there any merit in waiting until we can consult on both um, urban areas, urban retail areas? Um, my, my concern is we're, we're looking at proposing reducing the speed limit in Havelock, but we're not addressing Hastings yet, and I just wonder if there's any possibility of confusion in there. Yeah, I guess without an exact science answer, uh, you would be driving Havelock at one time in, in, in your life and driving Hastings at a different time. You wouldn't be driving the two at the exact same time at the same moment. So the consistency will come from the environment. Uh, the signage will help, but as we reported last time, most of the speeds in the, these areas are already at 30 kilometres an hour during the busy times or very close to. So I would expect no adverse impacts of treating one and not the other. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harvey. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Just to follow on from Councillor Shollum, um, there was a MailChimp um, survey that went out to members from the Havelock North Business Association uh, with quite detailed information about uh, the speed restrictions in the village, but I'm not sure if there was any response. <laughs> There's been no... Well, I haven't seen the reply from that, so I'm not sure if you actually did. It did go out but I'm not sure whether anything has been collated. Um, but just to follow on from that, because it's only going out for consultation, um, I would have thought to keep things consistent that it may be better to include Hastings. Um, we're only asking the question, um, and, and uh, so it was either do we just carry on and, and include Hastings, or I'm interested to know what the uh, when the next opportunity actually is. Um, you know, sort of to be an annual process. So will it be this time next year that we'll be looking at it? So yeah, I, I'd just like to understand that a little bit better. And then secondly, um, um, what was my other one? Sorry. Um, Just on that one, we did, while you're getting the next question, oh, Councillor yeah. Harvey, yeah. we did uh, have this conversation at the workshop and about, and then Hastings Business Association uh, were consulted. So would you like to just give us an update on that, Gavin? Yeah. Thank I, you. Uh, Note to Councillor Harvey, you, you were an apology at the workshop. So last, when we hosted the workshop, the questions from the councillors came back as to what's the view of the Business Association. Yeah. And as a council, we'd really like to understand that before we endorse going to the public. Hence, we went to the two business associations. Um, so one's come back and said we're in favour. The other one said, actually, we, we'd rather you didn't go this time. So that, that's, I guess, what we've reported back to council. OK, thank you. Now, I do recall the other one, and I should have recorded it in the first place because it in, involves myself. Um, <laughs> uh, Waipatu Settlement Road, where I reside, um, and this came up at the Waipatu community meeting where the speed limits and stuff or restrictions were um, suggested, and I was surprised that Waipatu, um, Waipatu, um, Panapa, I think it is, and Prairie Road, no, Prairie, Waipatu, and Watson are of the same, pretty much the same length. They've been 80. We're suggesting they go down to 60, and I'm struggling to work out why you would 
make the step to 60 instead of making it through to 50. They're short roads. Um, they are um, becoming quite busy with production or harvesting of fruit as well. Um, so just try and understand the calculations when it comes to those sort of decisions. Uh, thank you. I, I guess fundamentally a 50 kilometre per hour speed limit will be applied to an urban area and you'd expect to see road tire development that supports that environment. Uh, typically, not always. Uh, I guess for these roads we've done two things. One, we've looked at the roads in terms of its nature and they are predominantly rural type roads, albeit short cul-de-sacs. But secondly, we've tried to make sure we're consistent with what we believe NZTA will propose on Academy Road on State Highway 2. And the guidance we've been given to date, although they're not ready to go to public yet, is that it's likely to be 50 kilometres through to St George's Road, and then a short section potentially of 60 kilometres per hour through to the, through to the Bay Espresso, and therefore tying into that 60 kilometres per hour makes sense from a consistency perspective, rather than go 50, 60, 50 over a very short distance. Um, thank you. Thank you. Those roads there are, in, in my road, for example, uh, there are about eight children. Um, and we're going to have potentially have heavy trucks going down that road. And I'm concerned that at 60k, that that is not... And I suppose this come, will come through, hopefully, in the consultation as well. And I'm just, you know, that... So are they... Can they, as part of that consultation, if they're asking for 50, do... Do we have that opportunity or, or not? Who would like to answer that? <coughs> uh, uh, yeah, this falls into a quite a difficult area in terms of being able to resolve whether we can change it from 60 to 50 without proposing both options. So I might take some guidance. Thank from you. Thanks, Scott. Um, through you, Madam Chair, there's always a scope question in terms of have you consulted with the community about what's being envisaged as the end position? Um, and, and I would think that the proposal to lower it to 60 is, is broad enough that this, if you choose to lower it to 50, that would be within the scope of things that people might choose to submit on when they um, submit on a proposal as it is. So my advice would be that it would be within scope. Thank you. Councillor Watkins. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, Lockie, just a correction um, required. Page 12 of Appendix D... On the map there, the blue line, 70 k is reduced to 60. Thank you. Well spotted, Councillor Watkins. Thank you. Very well spotted. Councillor well Nixon. <laughs> Councillor Nixon. Yeah, thanks. Um, i would just make a comment before I ask the question I want to ask. Uh, this is a process of consultation. That is, if we don't put a stake in the ground, people have nothing to reference it against. So we've taken a stand, it might not even be one we believe in, but at least it's something that people can aim their comments at and give us a more meaningful response. And uh, leading into the question, I was uh, on council a few years ago when we uh, got some serious mud on our face over the consultation process uh, connected to speed limits. And in fact, we had to go through the whole process again because in the wider public, they're getting so much stuff from council. The paper's full of... In fact, the paper's all council stuff, isn't it, some days? And, and, so, and so they don't see it. And it's important that we have a process that people actually understand what we're going to do. And I remember on that occasion, we went out and put signs on the roads where a significant speed reduction was going to take place, saying this road, or the councillors suggesting this road be reduced from 100k to 80k's, whatever. And I think that got a very good response. We had a lot of commercial people come in, apple growers and so on, saying it will slow their whole process down. So my question is, are we going to do something like that again? You know, put signs up that say, this is under consideration. If you don't like it, or do like it either way, tell us in the, in the formal consultation process. Thank you. So, so, um, so perhaps, um, Gavin, you might be able to explain a little bit around the consultation process and the communication uh, and with the engagement for our community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I guess I'll start by saying we've had a few goes at this now, so we've managed to refine our <laughs> process somewhat. Uh, and 
I guess, pleasingly, the last two iterations of these changes, we've had really good feedback from the public. And by good, I mean we've had a lot of feedback to consider. So that shows we're sort of pitching in at the right place. We will do a combination of things. One, we'll go directly to the affected parties. So we'll send them letters. We'll meet them if they wish to meet. We'll provide all the information in all the standard places that you would expect, all the council buildings. Last time we ran some radio adverts, which Councillor O'Keefe helped with, uh, to just highlight that there were proposed changes coming. And then finally, we put up signs on every road where there was a proposed change. And we're looking to do very similar again. We've got some refinements compared to the last iteration following the feedback we got from this council uh, in terms of wanting to know, is it an affected resident who's making the comment or is it someone who's driving the road on a regular occasion? So we've, we've made some further refinements, but I'm pretty confident the vast majority of people who drive the roads or live on the roads will not be able to avoid that something's being proposed there. Can I just make a comment, please? That could is someone from comms here with us this afternoon, Nikki? Um, is so the comms plan for speed limit review um, has that been signed off and completed? Cool. So everyone has had a chance to have a look at that, and are you comfortable with that in comms and engagement plan? Okay. Yes. Good. Thank you. Because that's a, that, what you highlighted there, Simon, is an absolutely very valid point. We have, you know, the communications and making sure we get that engagement right and that we get submissions back from the right people is very, very relevant. <coughs> Councillor Barber. <coughs> Good. Uh, thanks, uh, Gavin Lockie, for the, for the report. Um, I guess my issue is, um, we, we went back to the other slide there, yeah, so, so basically Homewana and that Tuki Tuki Tiawanga area has basically been put into an 80, 80k area, except for the other two, um, two roads here. So, um, <clears throat> you know, it's one that lives out of town. Um, you know, we want to get to... There's a lot of people that live out of Homewana there, want to get to town or where they, wherever they work. At a you know efficiently, so I'm wondering if NZTA um, take that into into consideration. You know, if you're going to go from 100 to 80, how much time you're going to lose um, uh, getting from A to B? Because you know, if if, if we're talking trucks, well, every, every every minute you're on the road, you know your 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 projects ain't in the at the market. So so you know. Uh, Time is important for people today, and and being able to get from A to B, you know, as and it's not dangerous driving, but as efficiently as possible, I think it's important in in the, in, in the day and age that we live in. So, so that's my first question: is if you take that into consideration. And the, the other question is, yeah, the other question is, um, you know, for area wide consistency. So we we kind of paint we paint a, a quite a broad brush. Across an area, you know, we, we drop everyone down to 80 because, you know, we're trying to keep that consistent with that road and that road. And, you know, <clears throat> I don't have a problem with problem roads and, and where there have been crashes and, and, and things of that nature. But I just, I just think, you know, having a, a, a broad red pen through a, a whole area like that, you know, I, I don't know if that is going to meet... Um, fully the community's expectations because roads are there to, to try and efficiently get to where you need to get to. So, um, yeah, I'm just, just want to know if we can... Is there any thought that goes into that? Because 80... Yeah, you well, lose 20 k's an hour. I think holy heck, that's another 15 minutes on I think the road. You, I think you made your point, but yeah. I think that the, the, the importance of this is that this has come from community. Um, Lockie, do you want to explain how you've put, as Councillor Barber said, a red pen across an area? Um, so I, I can answer both of those questions. <laughs> uh, so that I guess when we set a speed limit, it's got to be both safe and appropriate. So that appropriate takes account of the travel speed or time, uh, and it is a it is a balance to 
get the right speed that's suitable for safety and how fast people want to actually travel. I guess what we've tried to do is look at the routes from a, a risk perspective and say, what's a safe route speed for this road? And does that have an overly onerous or adverse impact on travel speeds? And I guess w without being overly blunt, the, the answer is no. You know, the, the roads are relatively short in nature, going from 100k to 80k, or for a truck, 90k to 80k, over a relatively short distance doesn't have significant time to the journey. It might cause frustration. Certainly people would, might want to travel at 100 kilometres. But I think when you look across the network, the routes that we've already changed to 80k, you see general compliance with those routes. You see people accepting that that's the safe and appropriate speed for the routes now. Uh, I guess in terms of a broad brush pen, I, and I totally understand where that comments come from. In this instance, we had Lawn Road, Mill Road, uh, East Road and Park Hill Road as routes we needed to treat both from a risk uh, perspective, but also in terms of a usage perspective. So East Road's changed somewhat with residential development. There's a shared cycle path, there's access to a school. So we've come with a, a proposed speed limit for those routes to match those environments. And what that left was a couple of essentially no exit roads uh, off what we were proposing to be 80 kilometres roads. And we don't think it's the right message to say to the community, 80 kilometres per hour road on this collector road to Hamoana, but as you turn onto a cul-de-sac, you can speed up to 100k. It doesn't seem to ring true, and hence we've proposed to bring them down to 80 also. So I get what you're saying. It ends up looking like we've just slotted something on an area, but we started with a route-by-route -route assessment to get to that point. Thank you. Councillor Kuya. Um, thank you, Your Worship. Um, once again, looking at Tukituki Road, and I'm interested, what is the difference really between Tukituki Road, Waimarama Road, and, say, Pukatitri Road? Because, to me, they're very similar, yet we're treating them completely different. So I'm really interested in the differences. Uh, I, I guess at a broad level, the difference in approach that we're taking with Ma Waimarama Road and Pukatitri Road uh, Particularly why Madame Road is the volume of traffic on there is quite different to the volume of traffic on Tuki Tuki Road. So that means the risk profile of the route is quite different. We don't think reducing speeds alone on that route will have the benefit or the outcomes that we're seeking for that route. So what we've got for why Madame Road and some of our other high profile routes is a crash reduction study approach. So we'll go assess the route on a risk by risk basis and come up with some infrastructure responses that try and reduce that risk. At that point, we may well come back and say, look, we can only do so much, we need to reduce speeds, but we wanted to start by looking at the infrastructure to see if we can get an improved outcome that way. Thank you, Worship. Follow-up question? Um, so just a follow-up question. If we do extend the roads, do we need to change the statement of, statement of proposal and the recommendations? Thank you. Thank you. Is everyone aware of that comment that was just made just then? Thank you. Um, Councillor Corbyn. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I have had a question on Pakawai Road, and I've suggested that the person that asked the questions makes a submission. Mm. Um, but I think it would be useful to know where the request for this change in speed came from. Was it from the public? Was it from NZTA? Was it from uh, New Development? Uh, just what was the source of the request? Thank you. Uh, just for clarity, this is the change from 60 kilometres up to 80 yes, kilometres now. Yes, yes. So that, uh, essentially that's come from the public, but also some of the uh, industrial operators out of the Fokatu area. Obviously Fokatu linked to the expressway being a key linkage for them. Uh, but as with all the other routes, we've then gone away and assessed the request to see if it's viable and appropriate. Uh, and in a nutshell, when so Pakafire Road was 100 kilometres an hour, some years back, and this is the, the first iteration that Councillor Nixon's referring to, it was reduced to 80 kilometres an hour, and a small section in the middle was reduced to 60 kilometres an hour. What we found post-implementation is that c compliance with 80 kilometres an hour along the route is very good, but as it goes through the 60 kilometres per hour section, they don't slow down at all. They, for the most part, they maintain that speed from 80 kilometres right through to 60. And what that actually means is that section of road used to be 70 kilometres per hour speed limit, it's now 60. The speeds have increased compared to what they used to be. So when it was 70 kilometres an hour, most people were travelling 70 because the differential between 100 and 70 was quite a bit more. 
since it's gone 80 60 they've actually just maintained the 80 kilometer per hour speed through that area so we're not seeing any safety gains from that but, but nor are we seeing any safety disbenefits and therefore we've reassessed that and thought well actually an 80 kilometer per hour speed limit is appropriate in this instance it operates safely thank you mr Perry. Through you, Worship, just building on Mr. O'Connor's comment, the other thing that happened after the setting of that speed limit is we did some road layout changes. We've changed to the road markings in some um, divider islands just to make it a little bit safer going through that village. Um, there was quite a lot of discussion when that 60, when the 60 came in, reducing the 70 down, and there were requests um, from your predecessor <coughs> that um, we would further look at that um, if the community asked to. On, on the line of once that infrastructure was in place, could we safely lift it back up to an 80k an hour? So. Thank you. Councillor Shollum. Um, thank you, Your Worship. Um, a comment and then a question, if I might. Yes. Um, so, uh, first of all, we'd just like to speak in support of the Pakapai Road uh, proposed speed change going out for consultation. As someone who has inadvertently acquired a speeding ticket when forgetting to reduce to the 60k, it would be great to have consistency along that road. Um, I would also... So is it you, Councillor Shollum, that submitted to the exchange <laughs> of the, the No, it speeders. wasn't, but I, I, I commend those who did. Um, my question is um, actually follows on from Councillor Barber's concerns around uh, time lost through travel. Um, and a question for you that, that you may or may not be able to answer. Um, when I was looking through this report um, and uh, deciding whether or not this all looked very logical, I did some research online and I found what I believe is correct information, but I'm hoping you can validate that or not. Um, on the NZTA website, I found some information which said a speed reduction from 100k to 80k over a 100 kilometer area would only increase the travel time by one and a half minutes. Does that sound roughly correct? <laughs> okay, would say you don't know. <laughs> well, I'm I'm going to take that as 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 correct and say that uh, that speed reduction shouldn't have too much um, impact on travel time. So therefore, it seems logical if that is correct. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Um, thank you, Worship. Just a couple of questions. Um, in our consultation, if residents wish to say, "Hey, and I've got a great idea," is there an opportunity for that? Absolutely, uh, and that's why we're here this time, right. <laughs> because Thank they you. did that last time. Um, and also, I'd just like to make a comment regarding the media coverage. Um, it was really disappointing to see comments in the paper, in particular the uh, graph that they produced that didn't provide sufficient information. For example, uh, Dartmoor Road was going to be reduced from 100 to 80. Dartmoor Road's 20 kilometres long, and we're reducing a couple of hundred metres of it. So the sooner we can get the correct information out to the media, um, I don't understand how they got it so wrong, but the sooner that we could get it out, the better, please. Thank you. Uh, Nikki, you've got that in hand? Thank you very much. Great. Councillor Redstone, last one. Yep, thank you, and just a quick one. Um, attachment 1, page 14, it says the Twyford consultation will be at the Clive Hall. I'm assuming that's a miss. Oh. <laughs> Miss Punk, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Redstone. Your Worship, I'm happy to move the recommendations all as listed, but with one amendment, and that is to include these roads off Tukitok as proposed here. Um, I would actually like them listed by name, please. Can I have a second over there? Councillor Shollum, any further comment? Okay. Is everyone comfortable with those recommendations? Aye. Right, all those in favour, please say aye. aye. Any against? Thank you, that's carried. Um, item number nine, uh, we welcome our Arts, Culture and Events Recovery Plan. We, uh, we have Megan, the manager of the Hawke's Bay Opera House, Toy Toy, Kevin. Do we have Kev here today? No, no Kevin's away. Just Megan. Welcome, Megan. <laughs> Not just Megan. <laughs> our wonderful Megan. So, councillors, this is following our workshop that we had and looking at our COVID response and our community wellbeing through arts, culture, and um, and events. Welcome. Thank you, Councillor O'Keefe. Seconded, Councillor Kerr.
Look at that, E2, easy. Have you got some slides you'd like to share with us? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Thank you. Oh. Look at that, Christmas. Councillor Watkins, Christmas and Hastings. On the roundabout at the um, uh, at the opera house as an entrance to oh and I moved that oh, that's great. Um, as the entrance to uh, the city on the roundabout mm -hmm. on the roundabout, on the roundabout. Okay. Lovely. right beside Toy Toy. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at that! Hi there. Hey, well done, Councillor Shalom. <laughs> Thank you, Your Worship. Um, a few questions based on the report, and thank you, first of all, for the for the report. Um, I see within here, um, as part of the options, and option one extending into the other options, um, the augmented reality. Um, and there was mention of um, looking at telling the stories of many local landmarks in the civic square and arts precinct areas. I'm conscious that we're really blessed in Hastings to have a lot of beautiful art and beautiful uh, cultural stories and stunning murals tucked away that perhaps our wider community and certainly our visitors may not be aware of. So my question is re regarding um, how that scope can grow over time because the thing that excited me most about the augmented reality proposal was the idea that our community and tourists could take a self-guided walk through all of the little, little hidden gems throughout our CBD. So I was just wondering if you could comment on that. Mm. Well, that's exactly uh, what we're thinking, is that we can develop it. I think the starting idea, until we kind of know we can actually go ahead, is to take the landmarks that we are all aware of that tell those stories, but then absolutely progress it to, to be um, a visitor opportunity, as well as for locals to hear stories of all of our local and landmarks, art, um, buildings, you know, it could be used for, for telling stories of the buildings, of the earthquake, Art Deco walks. It's, the, it's endless, yeah. Fantastic. That's, that's wonderful. Uh, second question, if I may. Um, so also looking at the report, I see that obviously this is an arts recovery fund um, that's been spurred out of this global pandemic that we've all felt the impact of. Um, and this proposal is looking at a six-month um, period. Mm -hmm. I see beautiful momentum being built with this plan, and my question is around what happens after that six months? Because it would be hugely disappointing to me if we were to then see all of this wonderful um, arts momentum drop off. Mm. And that's the beauty of um, the light boxes. They will be staying and being used over um, a long period of time. Many of them, the augmented reality will continue through. Um, a lot of the, the Christmas work that we're thinking around is a, a, around um, buying it and reusing it, but also then on selling it as well. Some of the stuff that we've been looking at is easy, e even usable outside of Christmas. So some of the decorations can be used for conferencing, for theatre productions. Um, so there's a lot of thought gone into um, the purchases of stuff being able to be reused. But I also think that some of the uh, community uh, events that we're creating could be have longevity beyond us just and I think this is our opportunity to get them started and I think there's opportunity for the art sector to pick up some of and support some of these initiatives as well so I think there is going to be longevity. Brilliant thank yeah. you and if I may make a request perhaps once the other questions have been asked could you take us through your Christmas presentation that you just sapped through <laughs> because I think I think it would be valuable to see it looks like there are images in there and maybe an extension to what we've had in the workshop <laughs> That we may not be aware sure. of. Sure, Thank absolutely. You. Sure. Would you like me to do that now, or uh, questions first? Um, yes, we'll have questions uh, first. Uh, Councillor Barber. Yeah, kia ora. Um, in terms of the uh, the option that we're looking at, 300k. You've, you've talked about a couple of um, external funding mm -hmm. um, investigation options that, that we could look at. Uh, I know that the, the Prime Minister announced a whole lot of funding in the arts. Is that one of the funds that we intend to look at? 
Yes. I'm sorry. Yes, it is. It is. It's through Creative New Zealand. Oh, that's oh, okay. Okay, cool, cool. The <laughs> other the other question is around. Um, so the, the the little ice skate rink in town at the moment. Is that the, the, that's what we're talking about here? You know, interactive type things for the community, or is that something different? Is that is that a, is that a private operation? That, that's through um, the Hastings Business cool. Association did the ice rink. But okay. we really we are really keen to work really closely with the business association and other um, organisations, uh, tourism, Hawke's Bay. So that's that's phase two of our plan. So once mm. this plan is adopted, phase two is to work with the sector to be able to support any events that they are doing. Um, and I think one of the parts of the Christmas uh, element is to be able to do exactly that, to support a whole lot of other uh, initiatives that are going on in the city, the, the Tremaine Lights, um, lots of other things like that. And having the uh, functions on Hastings Room decorated allows us some uh, revenue opportunities in selling that space as a Christmas function space. So going out to the corporate businesses and saying, it's already decorated Christmas, come and you know, put the cabaret tables up, have your, um, your work do. So there's opportunities to not just decorate, but to actually um, support other events as well. Okay. Well, yeah, because yeah, if I look at that, that's been really successful in terms of getting people into the CBD. So. Um, you know, uh, yeah. So, Councillor yeah, Barber, we, um, Council, it was a, a partnership with, with the business association, yeah, 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 so yeah, Council yeah. contributed yeah. to the funding right. of the... Mm. Well, that's what we want. Yes. You know, that's what we want from yeah. these things. Mm -hmm. Get people lining up to come yeah, and, it was and check them out. Absolutely. <coughs> awesome. Councillor O'Keefe? Yeah. Kia ora kura matua. I just, just want to remind you of a conversation we had. It's sort of a question. We talked about sustainability and carrying it on, mm -hmm. and I remember a conversation where we, we discuss, we as councillors, changing our language and including toy, toy, toy in that language and miharo. That was another way of keeping it alive and, and giving it a, making a living, breathing entity. That's right, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We can't just leave it to one thing, a whole heap of activities. We've got to get them behind that. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And one of the... Um, one of the events we're proposing is Me Huddle Excerpt. So it's the idea of continuing what we started in lockdown and, and supporting our artists to present work free to our community. So again, keeping that going. And um, Te Tera Mai, which we had on the weekend, was um, our facilities open together with events on um, for our community. Now that is in the list, but we actually wanted to get that going. We wanted to get out into, into our community and say, come and see, come and see what we've got going on. Um, so we had a lot of engagement over the weekend and it was really great to see people coming out and getting involved in what's going on. Wonderful. Thank you very much. So we have a mover and a seconder. No further questions or comments? I'll put that. All those in favour, please say aye. Oh, you want to do that. How long does that take? Oh, I'm just I'll, conscious I'll that we've whiz got... whiz through it really okay, quickly. thank you. <laughs> well, I'll just finish my motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Any against? Thank you, that's carried. Thank you, Megan. Wonderful, thank you. So this is um, focusing on the benefits, which is, is in the report. Um, so I'll take that as read. And the um, option which you've just... <laughs> so these are the um, these are all the things that we're going to do. So the light boxes is going to happen... Uh, boxes are going to happen pretty quickly. They are, uh, they'll, they'll be ordered. Uh, and then all these other events are all underway. So we're, we're really focused on delivering those as soon as possible. Uh, these, this is an example of the light boxes. And here it says we'll, these will all be available to be reused, activated and repurposed. These offer um, a really great opportunity to market our venues, to market what's going on in our city, um, and also to, to display art um, exhibitions. Uh, then there's some more examples of the light boxes. Very pretty. Um, this is just a, um, an idea of what we can do in functions on Hastings as far as um, hanging. We, because we have the hanging points in the building, we can hang all of these decorations um, and make this a really exciting Christmas space. And the Christmas tree is going to have a big refurb, so I think everybody would be pretty thrilled about that. Um, this one is going to look particularly good outside of Toy Toy. And um, through the streets, we, we're going to have festoons and Christmas decorations throughout the streets. And this, isn't, uh, this hasn't been made yet, but this is going to be very similar to the trumpets that you all saw that, that, that were hugely successful in engaging the community. Um, these are going to be the same thing, and they'll have kids can push them, and the Christmas carols will, will play. So interactive, and it will be first presented in Hastings.
Um, and that's the pretty pictures. Oh, this is just around the funding opportunities that we are looking at. So we do have a boosted campaign at the moment for our head of home stories, um, working with uh, arts, Hawke's Bay Art, Boosted Arts, and Creative New Zealand have a fund called um, the Regents Fund, and that is an opportunity for us to match fund with Creative New Zealand. They want to really encourage local government to uh, uh, be involved in the arts and encourage participation. So those are um, both, both opportunities that we're looking at right now. And that's it. Educate, celebrate, collaborate and inform. Yay, Ooh, well yeah. done. Thank you. Miharo. Uh, Councillor O'Keefe? Yeah. Just Did a you... quick question, Kauramatu, uh, Megan. Megan. Um, we talked about the nativity, and I think uh, Councillor Watkins sort of uh, endorsed that. Uh, what are we doing about that? Yes, that'll we be... know what Christmas is really about. That'll about, be, uh, yep, absolutely. Yep, no, that'll be included, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, afternoon shout by Councillor Nixon, I believe. Thank you. Uh, well done. Uh, well you. done. Thank you very much, Megan. Uh, awesome. Now, just wondering how our youth council are going. Have you had enough? Do you need to leave? We are at item 10 and you're at item 14. Would you like to come forward now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Lovely. So we're moving now to item 14. We're bringing our youth council forward now. Before you get into some of the hard planning and not such sexy stuff as we've just seen or some exciting stuff. Welcome. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Your Worship. I'll take the reporter's read. Uh, so, uh, Sophie is here to do her speech if you'd like to hear from her. And then we'll have some questions after that. Cheers. Welcome, Sophie. Thank you, Thank Madam you. Chair. Kia ora koutou. My name is Sophie Jones, and I'm the chairperson of the Hastings Youth Council. I'm a Year 13 student at Karimu who has a passion for people, the environment, and business. This year is my second year on the Youth Council, and I'm excited to share a bit more about us and what we're getting up to this year. I, alongside 17 other passionate, like-minded youth, work together to canvas young people's opinions on a range of topics, to then advocate and implement changes on behalf of the young people in Hastings. We are responsible for creating dynamic engagement opportunities for young people to participate in, be heard and be involved in community activities and government decisions. At the beginning of the year, we all came together to have a brainstorming session to decide our values and goals as a youth council for 2020. Our four main values this year are balance, manaki tanga, compassion, and positive influence. Balance being extremely important to us as young people, having to juggle school, part-time jobs, and extracurriculars. It is essential that we have a good balance to avoid burning ourselves out. Manaki tanga means to be caring, supportive, and respectful. Manaki tanga is important as in order to value other people's ideas, we need to show respect towards each other. Compassion as we value motivating people to go out of their way to help them physical, mental, or emotional pains of another or themselves. And lastly, positive influence, as we want to be a role model to other young members of the community. Our four main goals are youth engagement, a valued youth's perspective, community promotion, and mental health support. Firstly, a little bit on youth engagement. We want to explore different types of engagement so that youth have a large involvement with youth council projects. Throughout lockdown, we were active on both our Instagram and Facebook page, posting a series of videos, including messages about different levels of lockdown, a stay home saves live video, and some isolation inspiration, reaching onwards of 1,500 people. Alongside this, we hosted a TikTok competition for Youth Week, which people could submit their little TikTok videos into one of three categories to win a voucher. Secondly, we aim to have youth perspective valued. Sometimes, because of our age, our opinions are viewed as lesser than older members of the community. We want more of a positive view on youth voice and to have that voice be heard. A challenge that we face here is that often we're engaged with by groups so they can tick the I have talked to young people box and not for genuine reasons. So this year, we're only focused on talking to groups who have a genuine interest in our opinions. Thirdly, we want a diverse range of people aware of the Youth Council and believe in what we are doing. 
And lastly, mental health support. We have a large focus on mental health and want youth to have a greater awareness and support in this very important area. Throughout the year, this is something we want to consistently work on, always promoting mental health hotlines and looking at ways we can support youth, especially during this post-COVID-19 recovery. Unlike previous youth councils, this year we have internal youth council subcommittees in the areas of Rangatahi Collab, Health and Diversity, Arts, Culture and Comms, and the Environment. We were all asked to choose the subcommittee based on our interests, skills and passion for the area. In doing this, we were able to have small groups of passionate people focus on completing key objectives for the year. Firstly, we have our Rangatahi Collab Committee. At the beginning of the year, Yani, Eva, Chaki and Tafiri were working with Denise to share ideas for a place where youth can have access to all services under one roof. Since then, with everything going on, the team are working to create a virtual Rangatahi Collab page, a website where young people have access to information on employment and education, mental health advice and hotlines, easy and affordable recipes, local events and a creative space. The team have been working very hard on this and I can't wait for you all to see it come to life on youthspace.co.nz. The Health and Diversity Subcommittee is made up of Daisy, Sam, Charlene, Zoe and Ramona. Their key objective for the year is to create an online package with resources for mental health support that can be added to this collab page. So far this year, they have contributed to the psychosocial communications plan with engaging and relevant messaging to communicate key messages to young people. Daisy, as a member of the Hawke's Bay Health Consumer Council, has also been working to provide feedback on the 1737 hotline. The Arts, Culture and Comms Committee aims to provide greater transparency with the public and youth of Hastings in regard to what the Youth Council aims to achieve this year. The team is made up of Lewis, Keelan, Brooke, Olivia and Andre. Their key objectives include a regular Youth Council column in a local paper, an amplified social media presence on Instagram, TikTok and Facebook, regular speaking slots at, for Youth Council members at school assemblies, presence in school councils and meetings with the principal. Together, they've also worked to create and edit and script all of our social media videos and have organised and ran our TikTok competition. And lastly, the Environment Committee, made up of Matilda, Lucas, Thea, Finley and me. Our objectives this year are to host an Environment Week with a number of sustainable activities such as tree plantings, beach cleanups and beeswax wrap, beeswax wrap making to get young people involved in caring for the environment. We also plan on making a video on easy environmental initiatives that people can introduce at home to live a more sustainable life. I hope that this gives you a little bit more insight into who we are and what we do. We'd love to get involved and engage with a range of council employees and councillors to continue to better this amazing place we call home. Thank you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Yeah. Yeah. I guess some questions, starting with Councillor Sholom. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and thank you, Sophie. Um, I actually just want to take a moment to recognise the huge amount of work that our Youth Council has been putting in over lockdown. Every single week they met via Zoom and they were actively working during that whole time, as well as trying to homeschool as well, which I understand was a huge challenge for some of you. Um, the other thing that I really want to acknowledge as well is the huge amount of work that uh, Denise and Pip have been putting in to enabling this amazing group of rangatahi. Um, this is a youth council who, for the first time ever, as I understand it, have put together their own comms plan, their own annual plan. They, they've done everything from the ground up. Um, this is a highly engaged group, and I couldn't be more supportive of what they are asking here in terms of having a voice at this table and allowing us as councillors to not just hear what they have to say, which traditionally has been done via written reports, but more around being able to engage in a conversation with them and debate. Uh, we, we should be considering and challenging your views and giving you an opportunity. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Councillor Shalom. Just before I go on to um, Councillor Politi, um, can I understand how, uh, through the chairs, um, could you just sort of um, outline a little bit about how our, our Youth Council will be able to contribute through um, through the committees 
So in practice, how do you how do you see it working? How Thank will you. I get the information? Thank you. Will they meet with the chairs? Yes, how, how, what plan do you have? <laughs> yes, they'll be meeting with the chairs and they'll be mentored by the chairs as well. Great, fantastic. Well, look out, Eco District, my goodness, move over. Um, Councillors uh, and chairs of those committees, they've got some great initiatives. My goodness me, how very, very exciting. All right, moving on to Councillor Oli. Uh, I really um, yeah, acknowledge and commend you for your courage and, and professionalism. Um, I know how hard it can be to stand up and talk in front of a big uh, crowd. Um, I really like the points that you uh, pointed out. Um, don't just be someone that ticks the I talk to young people uh, box. Um, engaging in meaningful conversations, and I also have a, a, big, a huge passion for mental health, so the hotline is um, really good. My question or request is, can you please explain a little bit about TikTok and Instagram to our audience? <laughs> Thank you. I sure can. <laughs> so TikTok's a very famous platform at the moment, easy to blow up, and we're starting to do things on TikTok because it exposes to a large range of young people because they're always using the app. So we're thinking that by running competitions on there where kids are having fun but they're also doing productive things. So our TikTok competition involved like showing us what you do for sport, showing us what you do for study, which was really cool to just, like, get all the young people involved and like showcase what they like to do in Hastings and how that works for them. And Instagram's the same. It's easy to promote competitions and promote events that young people can attend to get involved in the community. Awesome. I can see a, a Youth Civic Honour Award coming, Councillor Dixon. I can see all sorts of youth initiatives come, popping up. How very exciting. Uh, Councillor Lawson. Thank you, Your Worship. Wow, what energy. It's very infectious. I can feel it in the room. Um, so I'm really looking forward to working with the three reps on the Great Communities um, Committee and, and also having that personal um, contact with you and, yeah, and, and creating a really positive relation, working relationship. Um, I note the... The barriers that you mentioned and our CEO mentioned in his report around tokenism, reputation, lack of support, that sort of thing. So, Sophie, my question to you, through you, um, your chair, um, is are there other ways that we can also support you to break down those barriers? Yeah, so I think an awesome way to support us is just fully having our back in everything we do because by having the support of the older generation, um, more people are going to be able to value us as like our opinions being effective and being meaningful. So just having any of your support, backing our ideas, even just sharing what we do on social media or just talking about us well to other people would really help us just to get um, the word out about us and so people value us. And then it should hopefully just having that bit of value will help with all those other things that we're taking for granted for. Great, right, thank you. Councillor Shalom? Um, very happy to move the recommendations. Thank you. Seconded Councillor Redstone. And um, I can't wait you, wait to see you teaching uh, the Chair of uh, Planning and Regulatory, uh, Councillor Watkins, how to do TikTok. <laughs> so um, we, are, we are also going to learn a lot from you all too. We're going to learn a great deal of how to communicate uh, amongst ourselves and, and with you. So this is a really, really exciting time. And, uh, and I can't wait, he's up for the challenge. And so I can't wait to see, um, see the committees in action, to see you sitting at the table and seeing you being able to contribute um, in our council workload that we you know, do the best for our community. So um, kia ora koutou, well done, a wonderful presentation. Is there anybody that would like to say anything else? While Sophie has presented today, what I noticed with this year's Youth Council that there, everyone is capable of being the chair and the mayor. And as the mayor, um, I would like to think that every one of our councillors is in that place that we get them to their professional development, that they are able to be in the seat too. And like you, I would like to think that every one of you has the opportunity to lead and to be able to um, influence and bring your vision because you're all very capable. So... Here we are. Look. So, um, share another one of the events that we're looking at doing as part of the Youth Council, which we were just discussing before, is running a uh, candidate debate 
because obviously it's not the general election coming up. It's only a candidate debate, um, but be good to attend um, because we felt that um, obviously it's important to get young people involved to vote, but also yeah, can, I just, can I just get you to come and sit okay. here yeah. because we like streaming. Oh, all right. Um, we can't hear you. <laughs> there you go, not even elected. Awesome. Alright, so yeah, the plan is that um, because we, we were going, well, it's important to get young people registered to vote, get enrolled, but we found that also young people aren't generally expressing a, an active interest in, in central politics. And so because sort of how do we facilitate that interest, help them get passionate about um, central politics, wanting to actually go out and vote and make up their own mind about what they want to be um, voting on about the issues that will affect them, um, if not immediately in the future, um, especially with COVID-19, lots of decisions being made um, that will impact our generation for a, for a long time to come. So how do we facilitate that? Well, we thought uh, grown adults arguing on a stage is a great way to get young people engaged. And so what we've been doing, we've been in contact with um, all of the candidates for Tuki Tuki and for the Ikaroa Rafiri Māori electorate. And so the plan is to get these people together, get them on a stage, uh, get young people, year 13s, um, who will be able to vote from around Hawke's Bay, get them in a room and have a debate about issues that are going to be impacting youth and where youth can actively engage with the people they're going to be voting for. Because the, the, they'll obviously have the general public debates, but you know, realistically, young people don't go to those. They're outside of school, um, just can't be bothered, um, which in some cases is fair enough. However, if we make it during school time, schools can send groups, we get these people together, get increased engagement, and I think it will just be... Um, beneficial for young people to actually see the people who are going to be representing them and who they might be voting for yeah. on a stage talking. So well, that's one no, thing we're working no, on. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor O'Keefe. I do have a question, but quickly, I've been on TikTok for years. <laughs> and Instagram. <laughs> Matter of fact, my grandson said, Papa, I see you on Instagram. Well, of course, my immediate reply was yes. And his reply was, that's only for young people. <laughs> so I, I do have a question. And it's, 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 uh, it's a, I don't, I don't, I would like to see a flat smear representative here. I'm just wondering, has there been any representation to the college? Uh, we've had change in, in principle. They're, they're in the, the middle of that, so I can understand if there isn't. But I'd really like to, uh, if, Someone could uh, make some overtures and encourage them, coerce them to, to be a, a, a much better yeah. 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 Thank you, Worship. Uh, Councillor O'Keefe, we, when we went out to advertise for the roles that went to all schools, uh, all uh, secondary schools, we do actually have uh, someone from Flatsmere on the Youth Council, but he's not here. Teaki's from, from Flatsmere. And we're actually working with Tanisha at the Community Centre to look at a Youth Council in Flatsmere as well. Thank you. I don't think they've officially appointed a principal yet, so there's sort of people in the community, but I would love to see someone at the college. Thank you, Councillor Baba. Kilda, um, I was just wondering, um, Madam Chair, if, if uh, through you we could ask Denise to just name, you know, which 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 of the the youth council members that are on part of the committees. I mean, they're here, but I. I don't know who they are. The chairs might know who they are, but... Um, mm. Yeah, Councillor Baba. 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 Councillor Um, we look forward to you, um, the mentoring. I'm very excited to hear about the mentoring as well as being as contributing and influencing decision making. So thank you, Sophie. Thank you to everybody. Um, if you do have to rush off, we won't be offended. We're very happy for you to continue and uh, follow through the agenda with us. But if you do need to, uh, thank you for coming in on your holidays because I know this holidays is very, very important to you and you've dressed up beautifully. 
um, in your uniforms in the holidays. So that's worth a clap. So thank you, everyone. And lovely to see you. And we look forward to seeing a lot more of you in the coming months. Right. And now we are on to, um, back to item number 10. Uh, and this, welcome Rowan, Rowan Wallace. This is the plan change um, to the engineering code of practice. Page 43. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this district plan change is a very straightforward one. It arises out of uh, the work that the engineering team has been doing on the engineering code of practice, updating it, amending it, and it means that there's, this is, there's a new document and that needs to be correctly referenced in the district plan. It also includes changes um, resulting from changes to the road hierarchy that Transit East, uh, New Zealand Transport Agency sorry, has um, introduced. So that's it in a nutshell, um, but very happy to answer any questions. Happy to move your workshop. Thank you. Councillor Watkins. Thank you, Worship. Um, just to say that this is an ongoing progress, uh, program through the life of the district plan. Um, section by section, there will be amendments coming from time to time, and this is one of them. So thank you, Ryan, and I'm very happy to second. Thank you, Councillor Watkins. Any further questions or comments? Thank you. I'll put that all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Any against? Thank you, that's carried. Thank you, thank you very much, Ryan. Well, you wouldn't have missed the U Council for, for sitting through, sitting there. And welcome to Megan, Lewis's mum down the back there, the, the very proud mother. Awesome. Um, item number 12. Uh, now we're looking at, um, no, item number 11, the tank freshwater catchment submission. Welcome to Mark. It's a very important... Plan change for us, for our district. And also, a lot of water to go under the bridge yet. <laughs> Excuse the pun. <laughs> uh, yes, thank, thank you, Worship. Um, just conscious you've had a workshop on this with a, with a bit of a draft already and a couple of workshops over the years before that. Um, I think the report's reasonably self-explanatory, um, particularly the cover letter to the, to the table of submissions. Uh, as said, uh, Council, this, this is a fresh water is a very important thing in this country, uh, and, and only growing in importance. And there's going to be more and more requirements around these as we go forward. The national policy statement does require the regional council to prepare plan changes like this that happen all over the country. Do require them to set uh, objectives for fresh water based on community values but with some bottom lines around um, uh, uh, ecosystem health and, and uh, uh, suitability for contact recreation. But after that, the community values drive things. The community values have been driving much more towards improving water quality um, than they perhaps have been in the past. Uh, council submissions on this plan change because there is a spectrum from, from doing uh, things quickly, uh, but with potentially big impacts on the economy, or slowly and perhaps uh, uh, not doing justice to our environment. And in between, there's all the community and cultural recreational needs as well. So it's, it's quite a mixed bag. So this uh, submission attempts to pitch things at uh, certainly endorsing all the uh, provisions around improving water quality, but wanting to take a, perhaps a bit of a more pragmatic approach around the importance of water quantity to our, our productive sector and to our processing facilities but also to our community in terms of our drinking water and our needs to support growth. Um, perhaps just playing um, a little bit more of a pragmatic approach, but still wanting to see improvements over time. So, um, uh, and to, uh, to try and uh, amend the plan change in just ways that allow the council more flexibility and more agility through its own water strategy to do the things that it can do. Um, so you wish we have to take questions? Thank you very much, Mark, and thank you for a very well-written paper and an enormous amount of work on such an important aspect of our community's life. Um, Councillor Shollum. 
Um, thank you, Your Worship. And first of all, just echoing uh, your comments there around the, um, the clarity of this report and the huge amount of work that's gone in behind the scenes. Thank you. Um, I find um, the proposed submission strikes a really great balance between those environmental concerns and the concerns of our future and the immediate and future concerns that we have to have in terms of um, economic and uh, commercial development opportunities. Um, so thank you for that, and I'm very happy to move the recommendations. Okay. Councillor Redstone. Thank you, and thank you, Mark. Um, I, I echo my colleagues' sentiments and find this very complicated um, as far as submissions go. Yes. Um, but worthy of the value of making a submission because that way we've got a foot in the door for the conversation. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy to second. Thank you. Well said, Councillor Redstone. Uh, Councillor Barber. Yeah, kia ora. Um, Mark, and yeah, acknowledge the, the work that's been put into the submission and, and support uh, the principles and, and the aspects that we've put forward um, in terms of our, our interests uh, from Hastings Social Council. I can see the, the merit in, in our submission and, and, and support those. However, you know, the, the report does um, highlight uh, that there have been um, some non-consensus uh, issues with the iwi and Thai whenua. And, um, you know, I think, you know, as, as a, as a, as a councillor, law, um, um, and also as an iwi member and a Thai whenua member, um, you know, I'm, I'm um, uh, uh, very conscious of, of some of those um, uh, <coughs> areas of, of non-agreement at the moment. Yeah, you know, and it's, it's, it's around water allocation, water, water quantity, uh, rather than the quality. I think the quality is, um, you know, that's, that's agreed across the, across the board. But the allocation issues, um, um, yeah, I think, and, and, you know, the reports that we saw, it shows that the water is over-allocated. And, um, and I think there needs to be uh, further discussion because, you know, we don't want to be entering into a, into a submission process where we're where we seem to be um, um, on, on the other side of the table from our iwi partner. So you know, I just just we just need to acknowledge that support where we are, um, but I think there there needs to be further cordial around getting to a shared um, uh, a place with our uh, with our iwi partner. And I, you know, I, I know we don't speak on behalf of of the iwi, but we do um, have obligations under the. Resource Management Act and the Local Government Act to um, to support EWI aspiration. So um, I'm just just noting that there. Um, support where we're going with this, uh, but also acknowledge uh, that as as um, you, Her Worship says, there's more water to flow under this bridge before it gets to where it needs to get to. So Kia ora Tato, that's that's a comment. I don't have any questions. I'm just going to put that there. That's a comment. <coughs> So, um, kia ora, Councillor Barber, and if we look at 6.4, um, that's some of that work that is going to, needs to happen. So, um, we've got, we've got more work to do, um, both with uh, Titai Whenua Ohiri Tonga and also uh, Ngāti Kahanuna representatives. So, um, and you're absolutely right, we, we want everybody at the table and we want to make sure that um, we have a as much united view as we possibly can going forward. So we have a mover and a seconder. Put that all those in favour, please say aye. aye. Any against? Thank you, that's carried. All right, moving on to um, Flex Me Loon to Swim Application to Trust House, item number 12. Thank you, Denise. I have a mover. Happy to move from the chair. Happy to second Councillor Lawson. Any further questions or comments to Denise? It's pretty self-explanatory. I'll move, Madam I have Chair. a mover and a seconder. Oh, well, yes, OK, okay. Councillor. Yes, all right, Councillor. Oh, Keith, you can know. move that. And then Councillor Lawson can second that. Very good. Sorry. Any questions? Any questions to Denise about this? Oh, sorry. Councillor Nick Dixon? Yeah, thank you, Worship. Just, Denise, you probably can't answer this, but I'm surprised they knocked this off at yes, six. There's lots of 10, 11, and 12, and 13 year old children that can't swim. So, why have they stopped this training at year six? It's probably a question for the schools. Thank you, Drew. You're the, your worship, I can't <coughs> answer that, um, but we can have a chat to the schools. We have a chat. Why yep. do they stop it there? 
Okay, thank you. So we have a mover and a second. Anybody else? Any questions or comments? No? I'll put that all those in favour. Please say aye. aye. Any against? Thank you. That's carried. Um, Uh, through your worship, I think the paper's reasonably straightforward. Um, as you know, with the with Hiratonga House now being classed as earthquake prone, we are looking for alternate uh, location for, for the 75 odd affected staff who are now sort of dispersed um, across this building, other community facilities, um, the emergency management office, and working from home. So they're all. Um, so we are working at haste to try and find um, an alternate venue, um, and we're, so there are some positive leads that we're following up on. We are restricted with um, the Chief Executive's current delegation to, to do that, and um, so this, this paper is requesting your approval to um, extend that delegation for this particular purpose of finding alternate location for, for those staff. Thank you. Oh, you've got a question. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I su support the general thrust of the recommendation. I just wonder, in relation to C, and the recommendation of 2.0, where the Chief Executive report back, and I read that after the lease arrangement has been made, um, I think it would be nice if, if we could just have a, perhaps a workshop before that's signed, Mr CEO, just to tell us what the thinking is, just in case anything sort of pops up. Yeah. Thank you. Be fine. Okay. Yes, so, um, so yep. you're happy with C? Um, that they have a yes, a, a back. Yes. that understanding is okay. we could do something that would be fine. Yes, I am feeling quite nervous about the the uh, number five alongside those recommendations. But anyway, it's You're up to you. five, up and including. It would be devastating, wouldn't it, if we had to have seven of our staff um, separated for us for that length of time? But anyway, we're going to do our best to get everything moving much faster than we can. So. <laughs> um, so, have um, anybody else any further questions or comments? So, we have a mover and a seconder, please. We, Councillor Nixon, seconded and Councillor Watkins. Um, no further questions or comments. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Any against? Thank you, that's carried. Item number 14. Oh, we've done 14. We've got a fabulous youth council. Number 15. Um, Rural Community Board. Ms Evans, did you want, Jackie, have, want to say anything about this? Um, yeah, I don't really have much to add. It's a very minor, minor amendment to the hearings committee um, so that we can hear um, any appeals under the Class 4 Gambling Act venue policy. So. Thank you. Councillor Shonham? Thank you. Second, Councillor Travis? No further questions or comments? I'll put that all those in favour. Please say aye. Any against? Thank you, that's carried. Moving on to item number 16. Uh, items under action on page 73. Just give you a moment to follow those through. And Mr Allen, are you the only one that's working here? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Councillor Nixon. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, I can't remember the forum, but I thought we agreed that we would, all, as a follow-up, we would also uh, ask the airport board to come and do an update presentation to us. But I just can't remember when we, what forum it was and whether it was in the context of this or not. I think we put that down the we, we raised it with the chief executive following our retreat. Is that what it was? Yes. yes. And, um, and the new that? chairperson as well. So... Yeah. Um, I think, Mr. Allen, you, you, can we add it to this soon? When is the airport board ready to come and present their um, statement of intent? When, what's the new month that they normally come for that? Um, so, through your worship, so that the airport would normally, in an ordinary year, would um, present their statement of intent um, around March, April. Um, they, they had drafted a statement of intent and it had been sort of adopted for the board, by the board. Obviously, COVID's had a, a significant impact on their operations um, and to the extent that the shareholders uh, have entered into the loan arrangements that they have. Uh, they are cur currently recasting their statement of intent and I believe it will be um, 
signed off by the board in the next week or two, at which time we'll be able to share with council. Could I just add another question? Um, traditionally, we've either had the chief executive or the chair, and the chair is one of our representatives, but to me it's appropriate that the people that we appoint to represent us are the ones that turn up. Thank you. We'll make note of that. So any further questions of items under action? No. Have a move. I'm happy to move from the chair. Second to Councillor Redstone. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Any against? Thank you. That's carried. Um, recommendation to exclude the public. Before we do so, could I ask the, the Chief Executive or Mr Cameron to um, outline the reasons why this item would be in PX? Sorry, through you, Madam Chair, it's just the discussion of um, what I would class as uh, business information for Council at this time, so it's appropriate that it be held publicly excluded. Thank you. 